very, very exciting news if you're a Dodger fan and it couldn't come any sooner. People are celebrating because the trade deadline, superstar-wise, has smiled kindly upon the City of Angels. Trades like this are supposed to hurt. You get a chance to acquire somebody like that, I think you're going to have to go all in. My God, are they stacked. Oh, my God. They are the best team in baseball. Now they have to perform like it. I was part a long time ago. You got a chance to win. You better take that chance. If you're following social media, you've probably seen by now that Ken Rosenthal is reporting the Padres are close to acquiring Max Scherzer. That is not good news. There's some urgency to find another starting pitcher to try to fill out their rotation. But it doesn't seem as of now that the Dodgers are willing to trade any of their blue chip prospects. Prospects are a Dodger staple. Regarded all around baseball as one of the top farm systems in the game, the Dodgers are known for the way they develop their homegrown players whom the organization acquires through the draft. Lauded for their ability to identify talent, the Dodgers work at it. And this year's draft war room is Bank of California Stadium, where there's room to operate while adhering to COVID protocols. Before we get started here, thank you for all your work. It's a big day. I think uh, we're ready for it. The board is pretty much set. We have to kind of like massage some stuff here and get these next two columns. So we'll do that as we merge, um, just and then double check it after the draft and really go through it. All right, all good? All right, let's see what happens. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Major League Baseball, we welcome you to the 2021 draft. We all look forward to hearing names called tonight that will become future all-star participants. Day one of Major League Baseball's amateur draft marks the beginning, for many, of a lifelong professional baseball dream. For the Dodgers scouting staff, the draft marks an end to the months, even years, of data collection and meetings with a young man whom they might bring in to develop as Dodgers. It's a little bit of a, of a Christmas day for us in our scouting department. Uh, the work we put in, the hours on the road, the travel, uh, especially during uh, coming off a COVID year where everything in, in our life was kind of disrupted. It was, it was a great day to get back, uh, be around each other, go through our meetings and, and really prepare. This is a big process for us. It's very thorough. I have the draft board updated. You guys want the updated to look at? multi-departments, multi-people um, who have impacted our, our room and our preparations. It's a big process that people don't understand and probably up to 60 people involved. We, you know, we love being together and we, we're really proud of our work. With the best record in baseball last season, the Dodgers have the last selection in round one. With 28 picks in front of them, multiple possible scenarios play out, requiring the brain trust to combine facts and forecasts along with knowledge of all the other teams to determine whether one of the players they covet will still be available. So, what do we want to go to the pick 25? Like first, we need to figure out whether we want to like, play around with those scenarios and shave here at three or go straight up at three and shave at four and five. Yeah, I mean, I think the, I mean, going through earlier discussions, I think we, the group's going to say, yeah, that's what we want to do. There's always a huge buildup, especially when you pick 29th. There's always a couple turns and twists that you're not expecting. I think a lot of it is more um, who's going to fall to you in the order and, and not, just not knowing what other teams are going to do. So there's a lot of calls and behind the scenes and trying to figure out what other teams are doing to kind of dial in who might be there at our pick. I think so San Diego is taking Merrill and the outfielder and, and uh, Tampa Bay is going to take Carson Williams. Okay. Like, do we just make sure we have a cell phone number, Brunt? Like, would, wait to like, wait to like pick 28 or something, just so we have it and call him. You know. picked, the Tampa Bay Rays select Carson Williams, a shortstop from Torrey Pines High All School, right. San Diego, California. 
for us. Yeah. All right, we're good. Congrats, boys. Nice crunch. There we go. Woo. I like it. I like it. So when we started kind of putting the pieces together and realized that Maddox was the lead candidate to be there uh, towards the end, we, we were ecstatic and that was some of the high fives and yeah, we, we, we looked like we're gonna be able to select him and this is great. He gets booed every time. With the 29th pick of the 2021 MLB draft, the Los Angeles Dodgers select Maddox Bruns, a left-handed pitcher from UMS Wright Prep School, Mobile, Alabama. I think this is a great fit for the Dodgers. The Dodgers do as good a job of player development as anybody. That's why they keep winning at the big league level. And they've got this guy who's got a high ceiling, and they're going to get the most out of him. Works, you know, ecstatic to, to draft Maddox. We think he's a, a very talented high school left-hand pitcher with some of the best pitches in the country. There's not much we don't like with him. You know, when you pick a guy in the first round, you're, you're pretty much in love, you know? So we're, we're excited. We can't wait to get him and make him a Dodger and, and start this uh, track to the major leagues. Maddox. Hey. It's Billy Gasparino, how are you? I'm good, I'm doing really good. How's your day been? <laughs> it's been pretty good. <laughs> Congrats, man. I'm just messing yes, with sir, you. thank you. Yeah, you, you excited? I'm very excited. All right, you're all right with the color blue? Uh, I think so. All right, I think you can pull off blue. Um, I hope so. I'm sure you know, but we, we've we've done all right in the past years with, with high school left-hand pitching, so uh, you're the next one. You're the next Dodger left-hand great, and I want you to I want you to believe it because we believe it. I do. You know, we work so hard to get to this point, and there's so much information that we collect, and, and the amount of scouting and paints and looks and travel miles. So to actually select a, you know, uh, a guy we really like is, is super rewarding. Um, we we kind of usually spend this day celebrating and then getting ready for the next day of, of drafting more good players and hopefully more future major leaguers. As Backstage Dodgers continues, the reinforcements arrive, including a three-time Cy Young winner. I come to the park every day to win. I mean, I walk through those doors into the clubhouse, my job's a win every single time. Backstage Dodgers is brought to you by Cadillac. Visit your Southern California Cadillac dealer today. Scherzer, right-handed god, World Series champion out of the Curly Dubs, the Washington Nationals, coming out west with his two-tone eyes and his crazy attitude and his distance running fervor. This is exciting. The day after Max Scherzer is acquired by the Dodgers, along with infielder Trey Turner for four highly regarded prospects at the trade deadline, he joins the team in Arizona. Turner will be with the club when he clears COVID protocols, but it's the three-time Cy Young winner and eight-time All-Star who the team looks to bolster the injury-riddled rotation for the remainder of the regular season. For me, I had a pretty good sense that the team, where the team was at in the standings, that. You know, I was going to get traded. Um, that, that, that was going to become not just a possibility, but more likely a reality. 48 hours of trying to pick a team, it just fried my brain. I wasn't ready to do that. I became at peace with it when I just decided to just let the trade happen. Shortly after the All-Star break, uh, they got swept that weekend and said, hey, we're going to have conversations about Max. And it was definitely a roller coaster where there were times where we felt like we could only really line up on Max. Others where we felt like we couldn't line up on either. Into Thursday, you know, that's when the reports of Scherzer going to San Diego, but we had been far enough down the line uh, on a deal for both where it definitely spooked us a little bit in the moment, um, but had made enough progress where, you know, we felt like we had the momentum. I might have called Andrew when I heard the rumors that he's one of the Padres that is there any validity to that? Um, I might have done that. Um, but no, you know, 
it, it's all kind of a lot of hearsay stuff, but ultimately our guys got it done. The more and more it went uh, into that day, into that afternoon, into that evening, uh, we felt uh, even better about it. And that night is where we kind of locked things in. You know, that's when I got the call. I was on a bus ride, you know, from Philly back to D.C. And on the bus ride, you know, I got a call from Rizzo saying, hey, you're a Dodger. Thank you, sir. Andrew Freeman is a deadline magician. To Dodger fans, this is what Laker fans have with LeBron, what the Rams have with Matthew Stafford. This is just the one thing they needed desperately with starting pitcher, and he's the best one out there. And then to get Trey Turner like as a throw in, are you, are you kidding me? They're getting a very, very competitive pitcher. It is next level, you know, compete at absolutely everything from, you know, in the batting cage to connect four in the clubhouse. I mean, he just wants to win. Having Bueller and Kershaw and other great pitchers around him is only going to elevate that. And I think he's, he's going to be pretty fired up the rest of the way. <laughs> yeah, there's no other way to say it. We've had some hard knockdown battles against each other, but that's what baseball does. Is uh, you know when you're constantly striving to be the best in the game, uh, you're facing off against the best in the game, and you got to go through them. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and you just got to learn from those experiences. And so, you know, this is an opportunity for me to learn and get better. It's been a whirlwind. Never been traded before, about a decade and a half worth uh, in KC, and been a lot of excitement, a lot of emotions. But it's, it's been it's been a it's been a fun kind of journey. It's a new adventure, so um, excited to be here, and hopefully I can help out. The day before Scherzer and Turner were obtained, the Dodgers landed 32-year-old veteran left-hander Danny Duffy, a big Dodger fan growing up in Southern California. Duffy spent the last 11 years in Kansas City, including 2015, when he pitched for the world champions, experience the Dodgers believe can help in their quest to repeat. You know, I, I was told that this was a possibility. I was um, you know, pretty baffled, man. I'm confident in myself, um, but it is it's very humbling to know that in you know, a team like this, you know, is, is confident in me that I could help him. Uh, get them where they want to go again. You know, there's a lot of dudes on this team I've looked up to for a long time. And, you know, you kind of walk in here and you got a little bit of nervous energy. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. How you doing? Good, man. Good. 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 Good place to be. Thanks, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Every single dude that I've, I've met so far has been awesome. So I'm uh, excited to be on a staff like that and, um, you know, help however I can, whatever that looks like. I'm, I'm here for it. Cameras and everything for you. You gotta be. You gotta be a dude, man. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you excited? Very. Dude, we're so excited to have you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Right. It's awesome. Kind of flying by the edge of my seat right now. Yeah, that's good. That's part of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's changed. You you've been somewhere for so long and part of a family, but then uh, we're gonna be uh, your second family and uh, make you feel comfortable. And I'm telling you, we have so many guys who are excited to have you here. But uh, hey, I gotta see that tattoo. Tattoo. Where's the uh, the Kobe, that the uh, do, the Laker? Look at that. Right there, so you're all about the Lakers. All about them, man. Yeah, no doubt. Have you talked to Kenley? Because Kenley is is like is he a Laker fan? as big of a Laker fan as you are. That's, that's so that's, that's, that's high praise, man. It's high praise. So I gotta kind of poke at him sometime about the Lakers, but uh, awesome. I'm so I can't believe you're a Dodger. I can't either, man. It's We've crazy. been trying to get this guy for like three years, <laughs> and then uh, Dayton wouldn't trade him to us, so. <laughs> we finally got you. Oh my God, it's unbelievable. I had no idea that he was coming today and the fact that he's already here is the coolest thing ever. So happy to have him. We already had an awesome staff, but guys have gone down and to bring an arm in like that this time of year, it's all the difference in getting to the World Series, so we're stoked. We're happy to have you. 
use the same thing. Makes all our young guys a lot stronger, that's yeah. for sure. And Trey? Oh man, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. Yes. Trey Turner? That's a bonus, yeah. We got experience with him, Betts, exactly. Kelly. Yeah. We've all been in the World Series now. Exactly. Yeah, you know? exactly. Welcome to LA, they're back. Look who's arrived, and look who looks pretty darn good in Dodger blue. I'll take in his first game in the Dodger dugout. Turner turns on it, sends it in the air, down the line, towards the pole. It is gone! Two-run home run for Turner. In the middle of a tight division race, with the Giants just in front of them and the Padres right behind, the Dodgers get Scherzer at a crucial time, and he knows it. I mean, I walk through those doors into a clubhouse, my job's a win every single time. Uh, doesn't matter which doors you're walking through, it, you, you show up, you're a pro, you do your job. You have to realize what you're, what you're up against. This is a tight division race. You know, there's three teams that are very good teams. You know, I faced all three of them, so I really know what every team can bring. Albert Pujols delivers again on an RBI single that makes it 6-3. Now it's more of a two-month sprint, and you got to be at your best in order to win, in order to get to the postseason. Got him and a 1-2-3-9 to finish this one off. And now they need to keep winning to keep pace with the Giants and then catch them. We understand what the task at hand. We understand what, where, where the stakes are at. Now let's go. Let's go. Let's go try to win together. Because uh, you know you got to be able to pivot on a dime like this. And because at, at the end of the day, we're all chasing the same dream. On one of those few and far between off days in Los Angeles, Kenley Jansen takes the opportunity to pursue an interest outside baseball. Yeah, I'm ready. I feel like the, the music was always in me. I feel like I finally just got it out. Like, I'm finally like, all right, instead of try to just listen to it or you know, enjoy it in Curacao. Why not just give it a try? He's been a student here at Torrance Arts Academy for the last three years, right? Yeah, last three years, yeah. He's, <laughs> I've been a teacher for a very long time and I've told him to and it's the honest truth, he's probably the hardest working student I've ever had. He's doing very well. He's progressing at a very fast pace and it's all due to his hard work. I thought he was going to that solo. He was going like, I was going to my solo right there. So that one that we was playing, I thought he was going, that's why I stopped playing. And then no, I thought no, he was you're going right, You're right. Oh yeah, I should also say that I'm, I'm Kenley's bass teacher as well, so. Maybe, yeah. you, can blame, maybe you can blame me. Yes, that's right. At the beginning of the year, he said he wanted to play bass, so we started uh, first just meeting virtually for the most part because of the pandemic. Um, but yeah, I mean, we worked for months and months, um, even through spring training, he brought his bass with him and we would, we would do virtual bass lessons several times a week. He got to the point where I felt like he was, you know, doing well enough that he would really enjoy playing music with other people. Um, we just called up some friends and um, some of the other teachers who, who were here at the school and we just started jamming with him whenever he had the time. I'm not good. I know, but I'm not good at that one. My brain is like, ugh. When I see you guys going like, I gotta keep up, I gotta keep up, I gotta keep up, I gotta keep up. Uh, can we slow down for a little bit? <laughs> you know, the guys are busy too, they have their own schedule. It's been a while, so today is the first time after, what, two months now that we jam, so 
You know, you're definitely gonna be rusty a little bit. Oh, music is part of our family. It's been part of our, our family for a long time. Uh, my dad was a musician, so it's always, um, it was always part of our um, childhood. I came from Curacao. Um, this is my first time jamming with Ken Lee. Uh, I saw him play at the house, but um, he told me yesterday, you're going to sing with me. So I said, okay. When her dad was alive, um, in their big yard, you know, they put like you know, a jam section. You know, you see um, Demisha, Demisha's cousins, and you know, you just, they put a big tent because it's so hot, and they start like at three, from 3 p.m., like it never ends. Um, it was fun, it was fun, and my cousin dad, he was telling me to learn music, but I was so into baseball that, you know, I never give it a chance. I feel like it's awesome to having her here. It's my first time jamming with him. It's, it's more special. It's more special um, having the bond with Ken Lee uh, by music. So it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. You gotta play the classical piece. This was very classical when I'm born. Like when I'm growing up, listen to I start playing piano and I love piano and I'm continuing to play it because I wanted to learn that to play it by myself. But you know, the bass is very, it's very emotional to me when I grabbed it. And um, especially when you jam, you know, with a group, it's amazing. I don't know how to explain it, but um, yeah, every time I have a chance, you know, I just try to grab that bass. I think what's really fascinating is his work ethic, you know, not surprising, is really yeah. intense. And he'll he'll document all of our our rehearsals or our practices and he'll just like watch it over and over to see how he can get better. Um, you know, it's like um, he, he has like time, he takes time to watch tape, I, I'm assuming just like how he does um, when he pitches. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. You know what I like about music, and it's helped me improve a lot in baseball, honestly, is um, whenever you jam, you can't have other thoughts in your mind. You just gotta have a quiet mind. And, you know, just follow. Even if you make mistakes, you know, just stay, stick with them. So when I'm on the mound, you know, it, it, it helped me improve a lot. People might think like, oh yeah, music, this and that, but no, seriously, it's, 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 it's a mental, psychology I feel like for me because I'm challenging my, my brain to move in different ways. On the next Backstage Dodgers, Max Scherzer shines in his Dodger debut. He struck him out! 10 Ks in his Dodger debut! 